they told me to go to the casino. <laughs> I was glad when they told me to go to the bar. I used to do them all, so I'm not condemning. I send everyone. But he said I was glad when I could go worship the Lord in freedom without getting my head cut right. into me. Being in there is this pressure. All right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. And those of you that don't have a Bible, would you contact me and I will get you one. This is your sword, this is your weapon. He gives five, six things. I read it every day, and I share it with others. I'm not only a hearer, but a doer of this powerful word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning to all of you, precious saints of God, and to everyone who has been praying about the election in the United States of America between Republican and Democrat as the two main parties. I happen to be a pastor in California, USA, but I represent thousands and thousands of praying uh, Americans and worldwide Christians who call our ministry. I want to say that within the last month, nearly every call we received, obviously in America, but outside of America, in the UK, in Austria, in Russia, in Africa, uh, specifically Kenya, and Tanzania, and Nigeria, and of course all over the United States, Canada and the other areas, everyone wanted to pray for the election in addition to their own personal issues. And we found that very comforting to know that they were concerned also about America's election. And every single one of them requested that President Trump become president. I did not initiate that, they did. And therefore we prayed that God's will be done. May I say this before I go any further. With the leading of the Holy Spirit, we Christ Yens, Christians, who willingly and proudly carry Christ's last name as our own, as a wife carries her husband's last name and as a husband graciously gives his wife his last name, we so take Christ's last name. And therefore we need to perform as Christ would perform. We would want to go along with him as one, as a husband and wife would go along as one. Therefore, when we take on Christ's last name, we are expected to go by his guide, his book, his standard, which is the word of God. Here is what I want to say regarding the presidency. And it's not just this presidency, it's every presidency, not just in America, all over. Please hear this, men and women of God, young and old alike, regardless of culture or color. If you call yourself a Christian and you are a true Christian, you must vote according to the word of God. What does that mean? If there is someone that is running for the election in your country that is against abortion, that is against same sex marriage, that is against taking God out of the schools, taking God out of the judicial system, taking God off of the dollar bill or the all of the money that says under God, taking God out of everything. If your president candidate is against transgenders, 
is against things that God is against, that is who you need to vote for. It doesn't matter if they are purple, yellow, green, black, white, red, doesn't matter the color. Do you understand? God looks at the heart, so should we. We have made mistakes, grave mistakes in the past of voting because of someone's color, even though the person is completely against the things of God, or voting because of the political party, even though the person is against the things of God. Big mistake. Matthew 6, 6 says, what you do in secret, equaling the voting booth, you must do in open. Or, or what we do in secret matters to God. So if we openly profess to be a Christian, we must do in secret, vote as a Christian in the voting booth. If these people in the Democratic Party and even in the Republican Party, doesn't matter if they are for abortion, if they are for transgender, if they are for taking God out of the schools and the judicial system and out of the uh, public arena anywhere, if they are for same-sex marriage, they are not for God and God is not for them. Why would you vote for them? You're voting for the devil, his demons, and the demonic plan. And you call yourself a Christian. You're not a true Christian in heart if you do that. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit and your fruit is who you vote for because of what they stand for. I know there are some elections coming up very soon throughout the world, not just in America. And I urge you Please vote as if Jesus Christ was standing in that booth with you. Vote as if Jesus was filling out that, that electoral vote card with you. Would Jesus vote for someone who's against his Bible? Of course not. Therefore, you should too. You should vote for those that are for Jesus, are voting according to the Word of God. Hence, here is the last part of the message. We in America respect one of the most powerful prophets God has put on the face of this earth. His name is Prophet T.B. Joshua from Lagos, Nigeria. I have had the privilege of meeting him. Might I say, he has received persecution just like Donald Trump has received persecution. When righteousness is bold, the devil tries to be bolder but he is defeated listen they attacked Jesus they attacked his disciples and they're still attacking his disciples all of us the great thing about President Trump is that it doesn't bother him he just keeps going he doesn't owe anybody any money so he doesn't have to give them favors to uh, keep them in office. There is no list of dead people behind his name that he has, that he has put in the grave uh, in the past. The man is a very honest man. He is against abortion, against abortion, against taking God out of schools. He's against taking God out of the judicial system. He's against all that. He wants to put God back in everything. He wants to abolish the Planned Parenthood abortion offices and they're panicking. They should be panicking. The Bible says evil will abound in the last days, but grace will abound more abundantly. It's about time. It's about time for such a time as this, that God has placed in this office of the United States of America. He may be a new Christian, but at least he's a Christian, and at least he's willing to sit and listen to us pastors talk. At least he's willing to sit and listen to things and reason them out and praise before he makes a decision. His money is not his God. He said doing right 
is what matters to me. I saw a vision as I was praying and I saw George Washington on his knees in heaven praying that President Trump become President Trump to turn this country back to God in which he originally steered it to. And we are believing that God is in the middle of doing that right now. The purpose for this short video, partially audio at our church, we'll be doing another short video of this. But right now, this is about defending two men of God, two different positions for such a time as this. Two men of God, two different positions for such a time as this. President Donald Trump defending that God has placed him there to spare America. And the other man of God is the prophet TB Joshua from Lagos, Nigeria, who has been condemned for apparently, they say, make a wrong uh, prophetic call. I disagree. And may we say we disagree. Calls from Austria, the UK, uh, Kenya, Nigeria, all over the place, all over America, South America, Canada. We all panicked. We went into shutdown. We went into, we, we, we were finished. We were finished as soon as we heard the prophet release the announcement about who he saw as president. And I will tell you why. Because we know, for those of you that do not live in America that are watching this, the morals of America have gone down the toilet. Excuse me, they're floating in the toilet. And we knew that if this woman would have gotten in office, the toilet would have been flushed easily. We knew we were on the verge of even worse. Why? There is no right or wrong in America anymore. There are no morals in America anymore. When the president candidate, this woman, Hillary Clinton, when she can stand on the stage with a announced well-known satanic ritual leader, one of the singers there, Katy Perry is also a, uh, she has announced on, on the YouTubes before whether she has changed. She may have changed. She may have changed her ways, but the last we saw on YouTube, she was announcing that she was, had sold her soul to Satan for fame and fortune, and she was very proud of it. And therefore, uh, she was introducing it on a program to someone else. When the president candidate can stand on the platform with someone like that, we Christians don't have the right to vote for anyone who joins hands with those who joins hands with Satan. This is not about condemning the Democrats. This is not about condemning Hillary Clinton. This is not about condemning Katy Perry or anyone. This is saying God Almighty sent Jesus Christ, his son, to save souls so all of us can choose the right choice. He died for Hillary Clinton. He died for Katy Perry. He died for every one of those people that have no respect for God's word. And he wants them to change. But at right now, at such a time as this, we do not have the right as Christians to vote for them when they don't vote for things of God. Let them have their way, that's all right, but we do not have to vote for them. We may live on this earth, but we are not part of the worldly system, the Bible says. President Trump, by the grace of God, was elected. As soon as we saw Prophet TB Joshua's video, we panicked. We were finished. 
I cried and cried and cried, and we called everybody we possibly could and said, fast and pray. Fast and pray. If you can ju- if you can do a partial fast, I know we all have to work, and some of them just stopped working. We all just, we just shut down and prayed that his prophecy would not come to pass. And then we realized, ah, this is like the prophet Jonah. When Jonah was told by God to go to Nineveh and tell him, and Nineveh, and Jonah said, but you are a God that changes your mind because you're so loving and caring, I know. Then it'll make, Jonah felt that it would make him look like a liar. It would make him look like he wasn't doing his job and that the people would condemn him. But let me tell you, those that are in the spirit, those that understand the things of God realize that Prophet T.B. Joshua stood in the gap. He was as a Jonah to America. As he was, he was the warning. He was sounding the signal to say, this is what's going to happen. And we could not allow it. We cannot allow the morals of America to be flushed down the toilet with another non-moral president. Since this last election, eight years ago, marijuana has become legal. Transgender has become legal to the point where there's shared bathrooms now. There's question marks on the door. Men and women can share the same bathroom. Where are the morals? Where is the holiness? We knew it would become even worse. And now Donald Trump wants to stop all that and he will because God will give him the strength and the wisdom. He wants to abolish Planned Parenthood, abortions, pull their funding so they can't be in business anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there is a divide and there'll always be a divide. And that's what the Bible says. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but I came to divide those that choose right and those that choose wrong, whether they're related or not. What you do in secret, what you do in the voting booth, all of you that listen to me, what you do in the voting booth, you must vote for who is serving the Lord. No one is going to be perfect, but what are their standards? Do they vote for righteousness? Do they stand for righteousness? Or do they stand for liberalism and do as you wish and no morals, no right or wrong. That's not God. So we wanted to thank Prophet TB Joshua. Thank you so much, Prophet TB Joshua. Thank you so much. For announcing what was about to happen to America. You were not wrong. You spoke what you saw. We heard it like Nineveh. We listened like Nineveh. And we begged the Lord. You said to Abraham about Lot, if there's 10 good men, I will spare this city. We feel like Sodom and Gomorrah over here. And we cried out to God, there's 10 good men. There are 10 good men. Please spare America and do not flush us down the drain by putting a, whether she would have been a male or a female, doesn't matter. It's the morals behind what she stands for is what we did not need. Please put a man in office that we can at least honor the Lord. Put God back in the schools and in the judicial system, canceling the the, the plant parenthood and God will prevail. I thank Prophet T.B. Joshua and all of us got together. We thank Prophet T.B. Joshua. And we want to say, I'm so glad you warned us. I'm so glad you warned us. Because it caused us to just stop everything that we were doing. Fast and pray. For this prophecy not to happen. Fast and pray for God's mercy on America. God's grace on America. To give us one more chance to do it right. And we as the people agreed. 
to draw closer to the Lord. Spend more time with him daily reading his word and meditating on it and performing what is in it towards others. Not just being hearers of the word, but doers only. I thank the Lord for Prophet T.B. Joshua. And may I very carefully say, all those who want to condemn this mighty man of God, all those who want to make fun of him and mock him, be careful. Be very careful. Touch not God's anointed, the Bible says. And we know he's anointed. Take a look at his track record. That man means business with God. We have often said that we feel that Prophet T.B. Joshua has the spirit of Elijah. And we also say that about President Trump because both of them are bold in what they do. One is bold for righteousness in America to change the judicial system from wrong to right. And Prophet T.B. Joshua is bold for righteousness for casting the demons out by the thousands and the thousands and the millions, changing people's lives from horrible to happy, from absolute disaster to absolute bliss in the Lord. Testimony after testimony, pro prophecies that are so accurate to the day, to the day. So we knew when we all called each other and we're praying, we said, we know this is of God. We know this is of God. Prophet is never wrong. And you were not wrong, Prophet TB Joshua. We heard you. We heard you loud and clear. And we thank you because it caused us to take it seriously. We saw what was about to happen through your words. And we realized our previous prayers were not enough. And we needed to continue to fast and pray. And because of it, God spared America. Now, can we all pray for the protection of President Trump, his family, his staff, for the protection of America from within itself, from the protesters to the opposing side starting problems? Can we protect can we ask the Lord for protection for his righteous people? Psalms 91, no weapon. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against America and those that stand with the holiness of America. No weapon formed against President Trump, his family and his staff shall prosper in any tongue. No weapon formed against my precious mentor and our prophet TB Joshua. No weapon formed against him shall prosper and any tongue that rises up against him in judgment has already been condemned and proven to be in the wrong. This is our heritage as a child of the Most High God. Psalms 91, a thousand will fall at our left side and 10,000 on our right hand, but no harm will come near us. For we only watch and see the punishment of the wicked. And again, we say, we reach out the olive branch to those that did not vote and would rather have had evil rule over America, would rather have had someone who stands for abortion, rather had someone who stands for same-sex marriage in the office. No, no, no. We've had that for the last eight years. Enough is enough is enough. The United States became a gay country, became a transgender country, and a marijuana smoking country within the last eight years, and a controlling of the medical arena country. All four were not of God. Just because someone is in office, that doesn't mean God put them there. That proves it with King Saul in the Bible. King Saul was man's choice, not God's choice. God even said, you don't need a king, but they wanted a king. So there he was. And God was basically saying, our father was basically saying, you made your bed, you can sleep in it. You wanted him, here he is. So it goes to show that God gives us free will to choose who, who we choose, right or wrong. In this case, by the grace of God, enough of America 
And I believe more votes are going to come in. I hope more votes come in that prove that he did win the popular vote as well, too. There, I believe there's some states, two left, that we still have to prove. But it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter. The point is, is thank God that Prophet T.B. Joshua said what he said, said what he saw, prophesied what he saw. And it got thousands of us in America on our knees crying out for mercy to God because we know that Prophet did not say anything wrong. We know it came from God. That's what was planned for America. And within three days of fasting and praying, we fasted all the way through Wednesday morning to make sure that one of the states were not pulled back like it happened before in previous elections recounting states. It did not happen because they knew Donald Trump has enough money to investigate and prove if they did anything illegal and they would be exposed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Prophet TB Joshua for sparing America. Pray for our protection and pray for God to be implemented back into everything that he was removed from. As George Washington was in heaven, praying for this election himself. So someone would steer the country back towards how he initially had it. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And I thank President Trump for turning wrongs into rights with the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for listening and thank you all. When you vote, vote righteousness. Don't vote party. Don't vote color. Don't vote popular vote just because everybody is. Check into that person and find out if they vo- if their standards are right or if their standards are against the Bible and you vote what Jesus would vote. God bless you.